and God's grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Well done. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. I'm so glad you're joining us today on um, Virtual Angels Landing. We are here on Zoom and Facebook Live, and you can rewatch any of our services on our YouTube channel. You can find that by getting on our website and going to the Sunday service um, icon, clicking on that, and then clicking on the YouTube channel. We sent out an email this week updating you about Angels Landing and our lease on Reynolds Road and our plans for the future, um, staying virtual. If you didn't receive that email, um, it's probably because I didn't have an email address on you. So if you would like a copy of that email, please email me at Angels Landing Spiritual Center. Um, at gmail.com so that I can get that out to you and um, so that we can keep you updated on what's happening as we unfold this new chapter. Coming together here today, we, would cre we create a collective divine heartbeat. May we who gather receive the nutrients needed to grow and recognize the divine mystery within. May we experience the reflection of divine love in each other and in ourselves. May our circle always be sacred, honoring the healing, teaching, receiving, and growing of each spirit that enters. May the truth always abide and peace always bless us. Let us join together for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. It is my pleasure now to introduce Deborah Eagle Cloud Ayers. Good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. It's a um, gorgeous weekend, a beautiful day, and I hope everybody gets to enjoy a little bit of that sunshine at some point. So um, I'd like to start out with a quote from Latsu, uh, our wonderful Chinese wisdom. If you want to awaken humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly, the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. So I want everybody to just kind of sit with this for a minute, okay? Close your eyes. Take that deep breath in, settle into yourself. And really let these words resonate through you all the way to your bones. If you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly, the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. 
feel that message. <sighs> okay. And come back in. <clears throat> so to embark on this journey of spiritual awakening, of spiritual awareness for the benefit of all sentient beings, eliminating suffering, eliminating pain that we create ourselves, eliminating inequalities, loneliness, darkness, negativity. In order to eliminate these things, we have the power within ourselves, but we must first awaken ourselves completely, eliminating those darknesses and those shadows in ourselves. We become so afraid of the shadows that the fear overtakes the ability to illuminate and simply bring light to them and confront them and work with healing them. So oftentimes we think of this mind-body connection and we lose sight of the spirit. And that is a piece that is essential, essential to this level of transformation because without it, we get caught up in the conflict. We have too much intellect engaged. We have our heart, we have our mind, kind of like Dr. Goodall was talking about last week, but we activate this frontal lobe and we try so hard to reason with our own intention of awakening that we miss the spiritual part of it all, okay? So we need to kind of adjust some of our beliefs in order to really indulge in this and achieve it, okay? So in order to embark on it in that way, we need to actually uh, adopt some new beliefs. We need to change some of the old ways and patterns that we think about. And this will allow our intellect to slow down and quiet down a little bit so that our spiritual contract can take over. So. Spiritual transformation is a task of the soul, not the mind. So the more you try to rationalize, understand, and intellectually grasp at it, the more confused we become, the further away it gets, okay? So where we've always been taught and we have this belief system that we understand something and then we're comfortable with it, we need to let go of that. We need to open our grasp on being connected to that idea and to that belief. We don't need to understand that which is of the soul, that which is of the spirit, that which is connected to the divine. That is the mystery, okay? So that will eliminate a lot of the conflict we get into here. If the mind wants to understand it, the heart becomes fearful of change and we get into that battle and we can bypass that all when we decide to do it from the soul with the faith that we have. And through doing it that way, our faith becomes stronger and louder. And we get to transition into that space more peacefully. Okay. So all things are possible. All things are possible when we, are allow when we align ourselves with the divine and we can turn down the mind chatter, regardless of what it's trying to tell you up here, what it's trying to grasp, what it's trying to understand. We turn that down and take it from here back to here, like we learned last week, and just reside in that divine love, that spiritual, soulful place that we can be. So that's one of the beliefs. That's one shift we need to make, is not need to be so connected here. And the next shift would be a commitment to healing. Now, this gets really tricky because when we get into the spaces that we're unaware of, okay, in the shadows can reside negativity and old patterns that we may not even be conscious of. But there has never been a more powerful, potent time to really look at that subconscious and ask it to come forth, okay? This is the time to do it. 
All of our astrology aligns with this. All of the chaos of the world aligns with this. We're breaking from the patriarchal ways. We're even shifting our awareness of who God is, what God is to us. This is the time to look in those difficult places. But you have to be willing to. You have to give yourself permission to. So making that commitment to truly heal gets rid of all those archetypes that don't work for us anymore. You know, the, the, the victim, the negotiator, um, the way that we kind of excuse things so easily. The old belief system of even no pain, no gain. You know, we become attached to our pain. Our pain brings us privilege sometimes. Um, you know, it gives us an excuse for things. Uh, I need a vacation because I'm tired, or I'm going to go ahead and eat that cheesecake because I've had a hard day. I deserve it. You know, we attach all of these um, excuses, reasoning. It's all up here again, okay? And to so shift it back here is simply making a faith-based commitment that you want to heal and that you're willing to look at whatever comes out of the shadows and work with it and not put it over here anymore tie it up in a nice bow, okay? But that you're willing to work with it. It's not always easy, but that commitment is important. The concept that's important to also grasp that we're taught differently about, so this is a new pattern of belief here, is that life is both impersonal and personal, okay? And we tend to mislabel things. So where we take things personally, it's not. God isn't out to get you. <laughs> and most likely nobody else is either. And when bad things happen, they're not really bad or good. They're just situations that ask us to rise into them and develop ourselves and learn and heal and grow. But when we start putting these labels on it, that's bad, this is good, bad things happen to good people, that's not fair, I don't deserve that, these things, this is all judgment. And so in order to really dive into this kind of transformation, we need to put that down. We need to say, okay, I'm done with that belief system. I'm going to see things through a different lens and not have this judgment of bad and good and fair and unfair. Because when we stay stuck there, then we never get around our own wounds to get on the other side of them to heal them. We get stuck in that place where we want to make excuses and we want to have reasons and we want to stay there in that shadow space that makes me feel comfortable because I don't have to grow there and I have an excuse to feel negative or feel treated unfairly or hold on to my anger, those kinds of things, okay? So recognize that it's personal and impersonal. It's personal in the way that it's your experience. But what actually is happening to you is impersonal. And when we get that framework around us, we can work a lot deeper on the stuff that we really need to let go of. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the shortcut that I have for you on some of these things, okay, if most of us have heard of the four agreements, great book, then there's the fifth agreement, but we're going to stick with the four agreements simplified is kind of a shortcut to all of this. So not taking anything personal, uh, no assumptions based on old belief systems. Okay. So it doesn't matter. It, a CIA agent was asked, um, about after at the end of her career, you know, kind of what her encapsulation was of human behavior. And it was interesting because her response was, everyone thinks they're the good guy, okay? So if we're not thinking about good or bad anymore, it doesn't matter. So we let go of those assumptions that we're always the good guy or the bad guy, or, you know, separating ourselves from each other. So no assumptions based on those old belief systems. Truth, being impeccable with your word. 
is truth. And truth in its raw sense is essential to this type of spiritual transformation, essential, okay? Truth is not always something that's easy to feel, to acknowledge, to work with. When you're really looking at the truth of things, usually we're squirming away from it. But it is the only thing that can be counted on. So truth in its rawest form, this is a place where we sink deeper to find out where that really is, okay? And then the fourth piece of that four agreement is to bring a pure heart with pure intention. Uh, I believe it's um, always do your best, okay? But that pure heartedness with pure intention, with that piece of I'm really committed to this type of healing. It neutralizes your ego. It neutralizes self-judgment. It neutralizes everything that usually pokes and prods at you up here in this frontal lobe when we're trying to intellectualize everything and that ego jumps in, but, 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 shame, guilt, regret, self-judgment, all of that, okay? So when we're really purely intentioned and we're pure in our heart, that falls away. So that's kind of the shortcut in all of these, if there's nothing else to take away. If you just keep those four agreements in your present moment, in your, that helps keep you awakened and you can really dig deep for this type of transformation. And it's, it's our obligation. It's our obligation to our brothers and sisters in the human race that we awaken. You've come this far, you're tuned in right here. Tuned in, turned on, turn it up, okay? This is the time to do this work. So <clears throat> in one of my um, meditations over the couple of weeks that I was gone, um, it, it was kind of channeled to me that in order to do this deeper type of work, something that would be beneficial to the group tuning in to Angel's Landing would be to explore our chakra system so that we really can uncover where those shadows are, so that we can really uncover where that subconscious negativity might be hiding, so that we can gently open these things up and really raise our vibration. And only if we do that individually can we end up doing that as a community and our world is calling us to do it. And we have to model it first, okay? So this week, the root chakra, we start at the base, we start at the foundation of all of it, our root chakra. It's, um, our, our chakras are made up of light and sound, if you're not familiar. And so there's a system of them in our body. We focus typically in the, in the like kind of chakra 101, we talk about the seven chakras that kind of run the core of our, of our bodies. But there are actually hundreds of chakras around us. We're going to focus on the core seven that are going to be most familiar. And um, if you get, you know, tickled by this, if you want to learn more, it's really easy to get on the internet and learn a lot more about it. But the difference in what I'm going to talk about today and what we're going to channel through here is that it's not just the mind-body connection. The work we're going to be doing with the chakras is the spiritual work. It's that commitment to healing. It's that bringing in the divine. It's that alignment and healing that we can do in those spaces in a deeper way with our divine connection, with our cerebellum. And a lot of what you can learn more about online would be more of just the mind-body connection without the spirit, understanding how we heal the body with the chakras, how the chakras can heal our emotions, and just learn more about the many, many complex, beautiful layers that we are as sentient beings. But the reason why I'm here and the reason what I'm called to do with you is spiritual in nature. And so it's doing that really deep transformation, okay? So the chakras are also a vehicle of consciousness. They travel through all of our lifetimes together. So when we die, it's believed that they travel on to the next life and the next life. So in some ways that is our, uh, it carries all of our history. It carries all of our ancestry. It carries our story of our soul. 
and it shows up. It shows up with us through every single moment that we're there. It helps connect us to our intuition. Um, it stores all of our stories and it helps us sense how we're moving through space and time, through all the dimensions that we're here in. And that's kind of what connects us that way. So when you get into a really deep sense of your chakra system and you can really feel your way through those, it's a whole different way to um, communicate with the third dimension that you're living in here, the manifest dimension, as well as um, other dimensions that energetically you're connected to. And the chakras do help us manifest what it is, where our journey is going. So it's not always like, um, it, it's not a, a fortune teller type of thing. It's more of a compass, compass to help us find our way and to see what's possible. Um, so let's get into the root chakra. Okay. It's called uh, Muladhara. Muladhara. Mula is root, Dara is base. Okay, so our root base, our first chakra, is located at the base of our spine in the pelvic floor and up through the first three vertebra in the base of our spine. So it's that whole space in our pelvic region. Okay, and it opens downward, like picture a cone, it opens downward, the energy moves downward. Um, the color associated with it is red and it's truth. Uh, I like the way Carolyn Mace describes them. Each chakra has a sacred truth and the sacred truth of the root chakra is that we are all one. We are all connected. And so I find it so appropriate and um, not uh, <laughs> serendipitous that this is the one that we start with and this is the one that's needed most right now. And if all of us can do our own work in that root chakra, then we're also doing that for all of us that are connected. So for those who don't have that awareness and don't have that awakening yet, when you do your own work, you're helping everyone because we are all one. And that is the sacred truth of the root chakra. Um, it is the root of our kundalini energy. So kundalini energy is the prana that moves up and down in our body. And uh, I, I'm not even going to get into that. That's a whole nother topic to get into. But the core energy in our body that moves with us and helps keep us clear and connects all the chakras, um, it's the root of that. It's where it comes up and through. Okay. We are connected through mother to mother earth through our root chakra. And this is where we get grounded. So we ground through that root chakra and connect to mother earth. And that is the place that we sink in. It's where we find our security. It's where our basis for survival all is stored in that root chakra. So it's also, I think, it, one of the most important ways right now to recognize its tribe, okay? Our root chakra represents our tribe. So this isn't about ourselves as individuals as much, or even in one-on-one -on -one relationships. Those come up in the second and third chakras. But the first chakra is about our tribe. How do you relate to your family? Where do you belong? What groups are you a part of? How are you a part of the larger human race? And everything in between, okay? So some of us, um, I'm adopted, for example. So I had a rocky start with my root chakra. My family didn't engage immediately with me. And so that was a place that I learned I had some work to do because that was being kept in my shadow side, this feeling of abandonment, this feeling of not feeling like I had really deep roots or that I really knew exactly where I belonged because that was rocky in the beginning for me. And so there is no judgment of that. Remember, we go back to those, um, uh, we go back to those agreements that we made. There is no judgment of that, but there 
is a recognition of it. There is a holding it. So whatever we see in our shadows, we hold it very gently, okay? And we move from here back to here where the divine helps us heal it and bring it to a place of peace and alignment instead of working through all of these crazy thoughts about it. We can, I mean, you can dissect it. You can psychologically understand so many patterns in your life and your relationships and everything else. And that may be what you need in order to let it go. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you're able to bypass that process and move it right into the cerebellum and work with it on a spiritual level, which we'll get to, uh, then you can kind of help just dissipate that into a better alignment for yourself. Um, anchoring. So that feeling of rooting down and anchoring into what we want to manifest, okay? So manifesting is the roots, the root bearing. How deeply rooted are you? How strong is your connection? How broad are you rooted? Because remember, what you do with your roots is also the reflection of what comes up out of the ground and how far you can reach. So without that root chakra being really secure, meeting our basic needs, our survival needs, the foundation on which we build our life, if that is not rooted well, then everything else we try to do falls short of our potential. Because remember, you were created to be loved. You are created as an aspect of the divine. And that has huge potential of what you can become and how you simply are here. But if you don't have the right secure rooting, if you're not, your basic needs aren't being met and you're not expanding downward, then you lose that potential in how you express yourself in the world. So connecting with your tribe, understanding where you are in a tribe, how it serves you, who you are, how do you fit in. Sometimes our past lifetimes can mess with that a little bit. So that can all be in the shadow side too. Most of the traumas that we suffer between the ages of zero and seven get stored in the root chakra. So our psyche is so smart. It's kind of, you know, like here comes the trauma. Here's something that's difficult for the psyche to deal with at that young age. And it gets manifested and stored to kind of protect yourself somewhere in the root chakra energy system. And so when we start looking into those shadows and we see what comes up, why can't I dig deeper? What do I have that I'm still holding on to that needs to be released? That all can be stored there. It's, it's the sense of trust versus mistrust. If you have trust issues, uh, they were most likely born to your belief system in the very beginning of your lifetime, sometime in the first seven years. We're going into Erickson psychology now, but that's the trust versus mistrust time. So there's a signal to you. If you happen to experience trust issues, then the root chakra is where you have some work to do, okay? It's also where we carry family karmic beliefs that get passed down to us on a cellular level. Now we're getting into things as big as bigotry and racism. Things that we maybe never chose to think ourselves or had in our consciousness, but were passed down to us. I don't know why I think that. And if I really dig down deep, you're right. I have a really difficult thing to think about or feel into here. I didn't realize that I thought less of that person simply because the color of their skin or because of their gender or because of their inabilities or because of their political views. I didn't realize that I was judging people that way. It may not be something you ever decided, but it was something that was passed down to you and that resides in the root chakra as well. So when we call in our ancestors to help us with this topic, 
we want to call in the ancestors that are a generation before the generation that adopted the affliction, where the affliction was rooted, whatever generation that was rooted in. We call in the generation before it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to know. It doesn't mean you have to, you know, learn a lot about your lineage and figure out who thought what and, you know, where everybody lived and what their belief systems were. It's not like that. Again, we're working with the spiritual, with the divine. We don't have to intellectualize this. But the intention, we talked about pure intention, the intention needs to be bringing in the help that can actually dissolve the issue. And so we, more so than any other time in history on the earth as human beings, we carry more karmic baggage, which shows in the chaos of the world, than any other generation has. Kind of like, duh, right? And it's kind of an epiphany of, wow, I got a lot of stuff to deal with here. There's no excuse. There's no running away. There's no, that wasn't mine. Nope, it's there. And it's yours to deal with. And it doesn't have to be complicated. But call in the help. Call in the ancestors from those that come a generation. Just wherever this was born into my ancestral line. I don't use bloodline because that's not always true. Wherever this was born into my tribal thinking, I need the ancestors from the generation before that to come and support me and help clear this for all of us. That's an important piece that's the spiritual. It's the spiritual bringing it in here, okay? Um, some of the symptoms of imbalance besides trust, mistrust, um, are uh, we manifest imbalances of the root chakra as low back pain sometimes, as eating disorders, as um, obsessive compulsive behaviors, uh, depression. Depression is an interesting one. And the question is, is depression manifesting itself as a psychological disorder? Or is it manifesting itself as a call to spiritual healing? And there's two different sides of most mental disorders. One is to call you forth to find your spiritual path. And the other is an actual chemical imbalance in the body, but it can show up and we're not sure which one it is. And um, that's also why it's very prevalent in today's world, because a lot of people are being called to find their spiritual path. So that's in the root chakra. And uh, negativity, if you tend to just be a person who goes to the negative thought first, there's no judgment. It's not that you're right or wrong, and it's not that you're a bad person. Let go of the judgment. But if you just tend to have the negative thought first, those are sometimes just chapters in your life. It doesn't mean it's who you are. It doesn't necessarily function as a part of your character. It's one way that your energy system is communicating with you. I've had those chapters where, why do I always go to that negative thought first? But that's a sign. It's a sign that your root chakra is not aligned. It's a sign that it's sick. It's a sign that things need to be healed there. Um, and anything fear-based, if you tend to go to fear first, and that's where you make your decisions from, totally root chakra. It, it has to do with our nervous system. If you're always in fear, uh, if you're always in fear, therefore you're in like fight, flight, or freeze mode, and your nervous system keeps reacting that way, that's a root chakra issue. We're living in a place where that isn't aligned. You don't have your roots. You don't have your security there. You don't, know, and it will affect your relationship to your tribe. It will reflect your, uh, it, it will affect your ability to feel stable, which is why the low back goes out. It can show up financially. It can show up in relationships. It's just this overall, like, you know, kind of heavy fear-based feeling. And that's root chakra work also. Um, people who tend to have a lot of loneliness, again, root chakra stuff. So there are many different ways to do what they call aligning and activating chakras. And so if you're really interested in that, do your Google searches. There are probably thousands 
of YouTube videos with different kinds of sound and light therapies. And all of those are very valid. I'm, I think that they're great. They align, they activate. But when we're talking about the spiritual healing at that level, we've got to pick the ones that are the most powerful. And two of the most powerful ways to realign the root chakra is through meditation and through earthing. Uh, getting your feet connected to Mother Earth with the intention of lining up that root chakra and working on the rooting and working on yourself with those four agreements. Doing that kind of work and using sound, sound vibration for yourself. Um, we'll go through that shortly here. So that is the way that we can realign and help heal and do the work. Um, why is it important to heal that root chakra? Well, it's essential enough after everything I've kind of shared that you wouldn't necessarily want to work on anything else without that foundation being strong because nothing else is going to stick. If you don't have the roots, the tree falls. So if you really want to do the work, you've got to start with that baseline, basic survival, get yourself well grounded, get the foundation underneath you, because then that tree comes out and that tree comes out to its greatest potential and its branches can reach the furthest and it can soak up all the nutrients out of the earth to truly, truly, you know, reach its potential. So that's you. That's your soul. That's your spirit growing. It's using your mind and your body to exponentially become the greatest aspect of the divine you have the opportunity to be, but you've got to have the right rooting system. So um, I want to take you through a meditation that you can also repeat for yourself. I mean, this will be recorded, so you can always go back to it. But this is something you can use as a tool to help yourself as you really start to um, explore and journey through your own root system, your own first chakra, and do the work. Okay, so ideally, I would recommend that you do this daily for a while until you feel that you've really worked through a lot of the um, uh, stuff that you might be storing there for yourself as well as for your tribe, okay? So go ahead, let's take, take a moment to close your eyes, relax into where you're sitting, connect with your breath. Mm. Now, right now, this is just this is just for you personally. So as you connect with your breath, really pull your awareness down into your tailbone, to that root chakra area, but really feel your tailbone, okay? And what I want you to do is with your intention and imaging, extend your spine and take your tailbone down through your seat, through the floor. It's almost like a drill bit and it's just, just going to keep sliding down and burying itself down into the earth. So you're taking your spine, extending it down and bringing your tailbone down into the earth. I want you to go down about six feet and kind of sense, sense the dirt being cold, sense the life that's in the dirt, sense Mother Earth's nurturing compassion for you and just kind of giving you a place to be where nobody else is there. And now kind of with your intention, spin your tailbone around to kind of create a little bit of space. 
like you've made a little tiny cave down there, a little hole for yourself, okay? <clears throat> and now you've created this channel, this channel between your body, your spirit, and a deep space in Mother Earth. Kind of feel her heartbeat there for you. Feel the safety she provides. And now, with the intention of your spirit, allow anything from your root chakra that's no longer serving you, any old dusty thoughts, feelings, beliefs, karmic lessons, karmic beliefs, anything that's no longer serving you to just drop through your spine and out your tailbone and just be right there in the earth, exiting your body. And feel Mother Earth just take that on like a mother giving a hug, like just wiping the tears away. She's there to just receive anything that's challenging, anything that's difficult. She's just taking it all in for you. And so your subconscious is just kind of downloading right now, letting everything dump out. You don't even really need to acknowledge what it is. When you have something that might be sticky for you in your mind, that your mind can't let go of, it's kind of stuck in your frontal lobe, that you're really hashing out, that you're feeling really challenged with, just it's like that let go, let God. So take that, especially if it's connected to the root chakra themes that we've talked about, take that and just send it down through your spine and out your tailbone. And we, in a very sacred way, honor and ask Mother Earth to do the healing of this for us. And she will very, very warmly welcome anything you need help with. And now, leave it there. Bring your spine back up through the earth back up through the building, through the furniture, and back into your body. You should feel a little lighter, possibly. Maybe a little more open in your pelvic area. And what we did there was spiritually release anything that doesn't serve you. So what's left to uncover in the shadows, there is reason for, there is divine purpose for. And so whatever it is that you explore and find now will be something that truly serves your spirit to learn and to work through, okay? I encourage you to do that with anything and everything that has to do especially with family, with tribal issues, with survival issues, with yourself in those ways. Because that root chakra is so powerful and connecting it to Mother Earth is like this immediate download that can help clear things for you. So now still with your eyes closed, resonate inside yourself. I am connected to all things around me. This connection gives me a strong foundation and does not hold me back. Security and stability in life allow me to move with both confidence and connection to who I am. Breathe that in. Now open your heart. Feel your heart chakra open. Feel your root chakra open. And now move your awareness out into the one, into the oneness, the we are all connected. 
So open your awareness and ask to feel the oneness root chakra. Feel all root chakras. Feel the vibration of the tribe. Feel what it needs. Be with it. Recognize your part in the wholeness of it. And do this work because you can feel that deep need for it. Hmm. So while holding that energy, open your eyes. Because we're not quite done. So similar to what Dr. Goodall talked about last week, she did a vibrational healing with us, a chant that helps keep our energy in the back of our heads instead of up here, okay? And we can do a specific one for the root chakra now. So the vibrational chant that goes with the root chakra is LAM. LAM. And when we cross our midline in some way, we viscerally bring that into our tissues and that helps us to really make the spiritual transformation through all of our cells. So we're going to do LAM and OM, okay? And we're gonna do it similar to the way we did last week. Uh, now I'm gonna add a mudra for you so that you have one more thing to play with if it speaks to you and if it doesn't, ignore it. But essentially you're making a peace sign, okay? Close these fingers, create circles, with these fingers so that just the tips are touching, okay? This is what this mudra looks like. It's the prana mudra, okay? And <clears throat> you just hold that while we do lam om, okay? And if you further need something to focus on, the color would be red. And you can picture kind of a red swirling disc in the root chakra area with light and energy coming out downward in a cone. If any of that doesn't feel like it suits you, ignore it. These are just all sorts of different tools to use, but find what works for you, okay? So we're gonna spend a little bit of time doing Lam Om. <sighs> Lam Om, Lam Lam om, 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 lam Lam om, 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 lam Lam Oh Oh Let that vibrate through your body. Feel that deep in your pelvis. I feel that coming out the soles of my feet. Whew. How'd that feel for everybody? I get nods? <laughs> Good. Good. So that's something. Whew. Oh, wow. I really needed that. Mm, that felt good. Felt really good. 
So that's really potent for us right now. That's potent for our whole tribe right now. Channel that for anybody that you know feels disconnected. Send them that. And when you feel disconnected, bring that in to feel connected again. That brings us all back into the sacred truth of the root chakra. We are all one. Whew. Okay. Mm. I fear we probably, uh, we don't have time for the song that I had picked up for us, but I'll save it and play it uh, during our fellowship. If everybody would like me to do that, we can wait on that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a wonderful uh, blessing from Raha Sahir. The whole of planet Earth is a sacred site. All people are the chosen people. And the purpose of our lives is a spiritual one. May we care for each other and for the earth and for everything relates to everything else. Feeling this oneness, may we radiate the light of love and kindness that all may live in unity and peace. Aho. Thank you, everyone. Sing on your end. Deborah, for a wonderful talk today. I so appreciate that. We all appreciate that. And thank you all for so much for joining us today. We want to hear your suggestions. Is there a topic that you would like to hear a talk on? Is there a class you might be interested in taking virtually or a workshop, a book study, a meetup? We can do that here virtually please email me your ideas at Angels Landing Spiritual Center at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your love offerings to support our continued operations. You can make donations to our website at www.angelslandingspiritualcenter.com. There is a icon for donation there, or you can um, make checks out to Angels Landing and you can send them either to my address or to 2400 North Reynolds Road, Toledo, Ohio, 43615. We will take a quick break and then please stay on and we will talk. <laughs> 